In this video, traders, we're going to answer the question, can a retail trader really compete with institutional money? Stay tuned. Hey guys, very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. All right, so age old question that flies around often is, hey, can a retail trader really compete with an institution, with the institutional money flow? Can a retail trader have an edge over that when the institution's got so many other things on its side? I'm gonna address that right now, but while you are watching the video, guys, I want you to go to the description below and check out our channel sponsor. Hit the link, go and see if they're right for you. Multi-regulated, lots of different markets offered, MT4 and MT5 platforms you can use to trade whatever market you like to trade or whatever time frame you like to trade on. All right, so institutional money, we know they've got lots of resources. They've got lots of capital. And that's the thing that we always kind of look at and go, oh, can we compete with it? But in actual fact, guys, we can, as long as we know where we can compete and where we can't compete. So let's look at some of the things institutions have. So large capital, obviously. Now, that isn't always a good thing. When you read interviews or listen to interviews with people who are managing funds or large investors, even investors like Buffett, not necessarily traders, even large fund managers, they say that the larger the capital, the more the capital, it becomes a hindrance. You know, we often think that having you know, large amounts of money is a good thing, but don't forget, when you have huge amounts of money, there are loads of things that you can't trade, ultimately, because the liquidity is not there, and also you can't really get in and out quickly, even if you're trading with some of the larger caps stocks or larger assets, thicker assets, more liquid stuff, like the interest rate futures or S&P 500, any of this kind of stuff, it's still going to take you time to work in and out of position. So that's actually a hindrance to many of these guys. Now, one of the things they do have on their side, which we think, is the information flow and resources. So we've got to remember this. Information flow, you know, okay, now we've got a lot better technology and we can probably get the news as quick as them within reason, unless we're trying to be an HFT, which we're not. We're just trying to make a few trades on some currencies, some indices, etc. here and there. But what we've got to think is, okay, these guys have got a lot of resources. The capital they have is allocated as well into teams of researchers and all this kind of stuff. So if we try to compete on that battlefield, we're going to get decimated. In other words, if we try to out analyze market statements or if we try to read in too much to economic forward modeling or if we try to dig into a balance sheet you know we're never going to uncover something that these guys haven't already uncovered and have dissected and worked out what the implications could have on the market so we shouldn't try to compete in that arena however where we can compete is the fact that we do have low capital and that we can choose where to allocate our money so for example, what we could do, what a large institution couldn't do, is we could say, hey, there's momentum on this asset right now. I'm going to wait for a pullback. I'm gonna buy this. I'm gonna hold it for a couple of days. I'm gonna come out. I'm gonna allocate my small amount of capital relative to these guys, and I'm gonna take the trade there. And I'm gonna use the fact that they're big, they're bulky, they're cumbersome, and the fact that when many of them are all shoving into one asset at once, to my advantage. So their weakness becomes my strength. When they will have to pile in, and they have to be buying, and have to be buying, have to be buying, over several days and causing that persistent strength in whatever market you're looking at. If we as retail traders can spot that and jump on that, we can use that to our advantage. So we turn it on this table. We don't try to compete in where they're competing, but we say, hey, what do they have to do? Because they don't care. Guys, they don't care a couple of days they have to pay up for a stock or an asset and they're spreading over a few days as multiple people because they're looking for longer term. Not always, obviously you've got some funds that are shorter term guys, but generally speaking. So we can use that to our advantage. And also, don't forget, the difference they have is they have benchmarks to try to beat. So they're trying to get percentage returns on large amounts of capital. Whereas us, you know, as well, traders and investors are slightly different, but as traders, we're all traders here, we are using capital as a tool. So we're not looking to get you know, a 10% return per se on our money, because for many people, that's probably not worth doing when we think about the amount of capital that we're employing. You know, many traders are employing a small amount of capital, we're trying to make it yield a lot. We're using it as a tool, and we're prepared to take higher risk trades with it to try and multiply that capital many times. So there's a distinct difference. You're not finding institution money trying to multiply 10 billion by three in a year. They're just not gonna do it. They're just looking and happy to get 6%, 10%, maybe 20 on a really big year. You know, for us, we're looking to multiply the capital, so we're prepared to take more risk. We're not interested in the percentage. And also, you know, we're not mandated to trade either. 
So we can be very, very, very sniper-like in the way that we trade, whereas the big guys can't. They are mandated in the fund and all the stuff to say, hey, this is what we're exposed in. If they have no exposure, then all of a sudden investors say, well, what are we paying you for? We want some exposure. And so even if, I dare say, they don't think that there's quite the best trades out there, they will probably still have a portion of positions on to kind of tick the box that says, hey, we're investing in X, we're gonna be investing in this strategy or that strategy, the other strategy, purely because that's what they've been mandated to do and that's what the uh, that's what their prospectus says they're going to do. Whereas we don't have to do that. We can just pick and choose. One minute we can be riding momentum. Next minute we can be shorting bear markets. Next minute we can be playing ranges with a stochastic. Next minute we can be trading whatever we like. And that's the advantage. Now, one thing to note, guys, that could also be a disadvantage because very often we start going, oh, shiny object over here. Look, gold's doing this. Oh, shiny object, scalping crude oil. Oh, shiny object, I'm gonna trade cable, doing this, do that. And that could be our downfall. You know, one of the good things about obviously being institution is you're very focused at, hey, we have this event driven um, strategy or we have this or we have that and we could take a leaf out of their book if I'm honest and say hey when we're focused on one or two specific strategies and just and just really nearly those we become good but anyway by the by we can be flexible strategy we're not mandated to trade these are our superpowers so we don't have to allocate capital we don't have to trade we don't have to stick to one specific strategy we can do whatever we like and that, as long as we stay in that lane, we can easily compete, guys. We can easily outperform these institutions when we're focused on that, as opposed to thinking, okay, well, you know, we've got to compete with all this. And the trouble is, the final thing, guys, we fall into the trap. Many traders fall into the trap because the news flow that we see is all about what the market's doing, what the bigger picture's doing, what the economic thing's doing, what the Fed's doing, what the Bank of Japan's doing, what this, that. You know, it matters to a certain extent because it's driving price, but we shouldn't get bogged down in that. That's their lane they can deal with that they're trying to forecast and do all that stuff we are literally trying to buy at a lower price and sell at a higher price sell at a higher price and buy at a lower price however that process works for us is how we should stick so when people say hey can retail traders can a retail trader really compete with institution? The answer is yes, as long as we know where we have our edge and where they have their edge. We can use them to our advantage. We can use the big money flow. We can ride on the coattails. We can use the momentum. We can play their game, but with our own rules and with our own specific process. Take care. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.